So good morning or good night depending on where you are in the world and welcome to another album review of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host Hector and today we're going to talk about the brand new album by Sonata Artica called Clear Cold Beyond. And for those of you that don't know the band, they're a Finnish power metal band that's been around since the late 90s, beginning of the 2000s, and they've had some classic records like Reckoning, Unia, and I. it's a band that, you know, when you think of power metal, you think of them as being a band that's it's very known in that power metal world. Yeah, uh, I kind of fell out of touch with the band uh, in the 2010s. Uh, they were releasing sub albums that to me were like subpar. They were missing like some of the earlier uh, like energy that their first album has. So is Clear Call Beyond a return to their power metal roots? I would say yes. I think this is by far the most power metal energetic that Sonata Artica has sounded in years. Uh, Tony Kako on vocals sounds great. Uh, the use of the uh, that guitar melodies and the, with the keyboards really sounds like classic Sonata Arctica from the beginning of the 2000s. So this is an album that's 10 track, 50, uh, 50 minutes in length. And you know, it's a well-balanced album. They have faster songs and the power ballads, if you will. So uh, the album starts very fast and energetic right off the bat with songs like First In Line and California. I thought First In Line was a great song. It really uh, pulls you in and, and, and makes you want to like, uh, like sing and dance to that power metal group and songs to it. The keyboard sounds great on this one. And I think the track, it's it's very uplifting track. And sometimes with power metal, you want that uplifting, even though this is an album that has some dark tracks that we're gonna talk about. So California, uh, I think it's funny because it's, I think it's made uh, as a metaphor of a relationship gone wrong, but it's, <laughs> Tony goes like, California falls into the sea. And I'm like, man, what does Tony have? against California, but it's kind of cheesy, but cheesy in just the right amount of cheese. It's a fun type of cheese. Uh, but then you have a, a dark song called Dark Empath, and that's a sequel to Don't Say a Word, a classic song from 2004, and it's all about a stalker. So uh, on this song, uh, when I'm listening to the song, because there's a part in the song where the singer, it's, it sounds like he's talking to his, the woman he's obsessed with. And he, he conjures in his mind that, you know, they're a couple, they're in love. And then it gets like all sweet and stuff, but it's about a stalker. And, uh, you know, uh, there's so many songs about stalkers that being sung and people uh, like dedicate them. So please, people, do not dedicate Dark Empath. It's about a stalker. So, yeah, I don't think you can talk about power metal without thinking that it's over the top, because that is what power metal does. It's music that is over the top. It can be cheesy at times. And, you know, uh, but, but that's, that's the root of power metal. Like, if not, like, it wouldn't be power metal. Uh, but, yeah, uh, there's some tracks. Uh, there's a single on this album that I didn't quite enjoy as much. And it's a uh, monster only you can see. I just think that song is just way too over the top and they went overboard with the cheese factor on that one. And they, they have like a choir singing at one part and, and it's just too much uh, for, for me at least. And I thought as a single, it's not the strongest uh, song. I can see why they used it, but uh, for me, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of that song. Then you have the power ballads like Teardrops and The Best Things and The Best Things uh, it's a beautiful song, but <laughs> I can't help but like Tony's like, uh, the best thing in my life is you. And uh, if, if you like put it like a, in like a different beat, it could be an air supply song. But you know, it's it's very, Tony Kako does great uh, vocal delivery on this track and uh, finishes strong with Clear Call Beyond. That's a power metal ballad too but that one is more epic in nature and it kind of builds up more uh and you know it's it's a good way to finish up the album so 
What would I say are maybe the low points of the album or, or things that I didn't like as much? I, I like keyboards, but I think I could use a little tad less, less keyboards because sometimes there's so many keyboards, so a little bit less, just a little bit, a tad would be nice. And maybe I think some of the placings of the songs uh, don't benefit the album. Like the, the first half is stronger, but after a monster only you can see there's too many ballads. There's like uh, the last four songs, there's like three ballads. And I think if you space them out, the flow of the album would be better because it drags a little bit at the end. Nonetheless, this is a very solid album and a great return for Sonata Arctica fans to be excited for because they're returning to the power metal roots. And yeah, I can say, yeah, the songwriting is strong on this album. And I, I think they delivered their best album in years. So I want to know from you guys, what do you think of Clear Cold Beyond by Sonata Arctica? What are your favorite tracks? Put them on the comments. And if you like the videos that I'm putting out, do not forget to give me a like and do not forget to subscribe. That helps me with the YouTube algorithm to get to more people like yourself. So until next time, people, this is Hector, the shield on a couch. I'm sweating as fuck because I'm not in Finland and clearly it's not clear and cold beyond here in Puerto Rico. So don't forget to subscribe and until next time, I'll see you right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.